Hey guys, Dr. Miranda here. Welcome to the wreck that is my office. Uh, it's about 20 degrees outside, which is why we're not doing this outside. But look who I have with me in the office today. Uh, this is my um, 870, uh, my SBS short barrel shotgun. And you guys have already seen this in a few videos, which is why I'm doing this video, because a bunch of you have been asking for this video. You've been asking for more details. So I thought I'd walk you through this 12 gauge. It looks a little different since the last time you saw it. It actually has its um, RMR um, 08G on top on a LaRue mount, which I will get to all of this, but uh, this is a great 12 gauge. Um, I've had it for years and it has served me very well. Let's get into it. All right, starting from the front, this is a 12 inch barrel. And um, the, the, actually, I guess I should begin here. This gun began its life as a 28 inch duck gun which I know that uh, some of you are like, what? Okay, it's really quite cool. Um, like I said, it began its life as a 28 inch duck gun. And what we did was, back then I had my SOT, which is Special Occupational Tax. Bear with me guys, because there's a lot to this gun. Um, I forget the gentleman's name. Um, I think he worked for Nighthawk Custom. Anyways, he sourced an 870 for me. Uh, is a 870 a Remington um, Remington 870 Express Magnum. And this is an, eight, an old school 870 back from the days when Remington was actually making good shotguns, not the crap that they were making before their demise. And so anyways, um, I told this guy, I was like, look man, I'm looking for an 870. I don't care if it's a police. I'd love it for to be a police Magnum, but those were really hard to come by. And I said, as long as it's a Magnum, because I intend on shooting some some stout loads through this thing from time to time. So I found a duck gun and we took the barrel, in fact I'll just show you now. So what we did was we took the barrel and we separated it from the receiver, which for those of you that don't know, it's not that hard to do. And then we sent the barrel to, okay there's a convoluted story to this gun and it has taken me quite a bit of sitting and thinking because it's been so many years since I did this. There were three companies involved. Nighthawk Custom, Hillbilly 223, and WMD Guns. And what we did was, there were three components to the shotgun. There was the barrel, there was the furniture, and then there was the receiver. And for those that don't know, the receiver of a shotgun is this portion right here, and the mag tube in and of itself is part of the receiver. It's just one piece. Um, so I sent all three things in multiple directions. Magpul even got involved because this furniture, <clears throat> the SGA furniture was so new back then that um, I had to reach out to Magpul and Magpul had to pull some of this stuff before I had even started going out to the distributors and they sent it out to the, uh, uh, to the, to the manufacturers to get it done. And actually, let me answer the question that I know that's going to come up. Um, the article that I did on this, I ended up submitting to the magazine I was writing for at the time. Because this is pre-video. Okay, that's, that's how long ago this was. This is pre this channel you're watching right now. This was done before this channel even existed. Um, the article ended up getting canned. I, <laughs> guys, here's what you need to understand about magazines. Magazines aren't pushing truth. They're pushing product. And if you're not paying for advertising, they're not going to push your product. Boom, there you go. So stop reading magazines, they're trash. So the article got lost because once it goes to the magazine, it's their property. I keep a copy of, the, of it on my hard drive. Well, guess what? My Mac crashed. I mean, this has got to be going on a decade ago now. So my Mac crashed and I lost thousands of photographs and hundreds of articles. And this was one of them. <clears throat> so my apologies, otherwise I would have had the article on my website. But now I'm doing it for you now. So, um, furniture went to Hillbilly 223 for him to do the very beautiful paintwork that he does. And, uh, and this is actually a black. I mean, look, that ought to tell you. He completely does such a great job of transforming this. This is actually black furniture. But he's totally transformed it. It does this really cool rattlesnake camo. And, of course, that's the Nighthawk Custom logo. And it's on both sides. And um, so he had the furniture, 
the receiver went to WMD Guns for nickel boron coating because um, the, the nickel boron process, let me just finish taking this thing apart, the nickel boron process is pretty much an all or nothing thing. You know, once you head down that road, you're, you're completely transforming a firearm. So we did, we did every bit of it. I mean, every, every bit of this shotgun, inside and out, is nickel boron coated. Obviously, certain components of the shotgun were not coated, like the firing pin and the springs and things like that, because that would be dumb. Uh, but the entire interior of this 12 gauge is indeed nickel boron coated. I wish we'd done the elevator, but the elevator is part of the trigger group, and uh, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to send that down there. I've always fought rust on the elevator. Anyone who's got an 870 knows you fight rust on your elevator. But the mag tube inside and out is nickel boron coated and so is the entire receiver. What you're looking at on the receiver is actually just a paint job that I did with Rust-Oleum paint. Just um, this stuff right here, camouflage paint. I painted it and I just parked it in front of my dehumidifier for a couple of days. I actually hung it over the over the dehumidifier on paracord for a couple of days and it did its job. But every bit of the shotgun internally is nickel boron coated. And what that equates to is a is truly a self-lubricating shotgun. I mean every time you shoot this thing it just cycles like butter. It's really it's really nice. Um, then uh, let's see here. So what I had to do was, because I hadn't done the paperwork on this, because this began its life, like I said, as a 28-inch duck gun. And you have to keep the barrel away from the receiver because if the two meet up and you don't have the paperwork done, you are now in violation of federal law. So what I did was, I made sure that the receiver stayed in Nighthawk Customs possession. Once it finished at WMD Guns, it went to Nighthawk Custom for drilling and tapping for the pick rail and the uh, LPA ghost ring. And then I said to them, hang on to it because the barrel, um, uh, they finished the barrel, they cut the barrel down, broke all the ribbing off and re-clothed all the, the soldering off and then um, actually attached the, uh, the front sight. Once that got done, they held the barrel until the receiver was done at WMD guns and then the barrel went to Hillbelly223, who did the furniture paint. He had to do the black ceramic coating on the barrel. And then he had to hold on to the barrel until Nighthawk Custom finished drilling and tapping of the, uh, of the receiver for the rail and the ghost ring. And then, yeah, and then all the pieces came to me. What I then did was, once I got everything, I did the paperwork, which is a whole whopping 30 minutes of work. Guys, the first time that I took this gun out to the range, I remember saying to myself, what have I done? I mean, with all honesty, guys, I, I had fear because I had never, ever worked with a shotgun this short. In fact, the guys at Nighthawk Custom and WMD Guns and everybody, they were like, dude, that's freaking short. You're not going to have any control. All the myths that you hear about short barreled everything, whether it be shotguns, whether it be rifles, I had all that crap thrown at me. And I took this thing out to the range and um, got it zeroed up and tested it. And I'm not kidding guys, I'm like, this thing delivers hate exactly where I look. And because it is wieldy as opposed to unwieldy, I have the ability to be immediately on the gun here and there's very little over travel as you guys know it's called it's known as moment of inertia there's a very low moment of inertia on this gun because there's not a lot of gun out in front of me so every time that I work with this gun I rotate I stop I shoot boom and then as soon as you guys know as soon as you pull the trigger and I know it's empty when I'm gonna check again as soon as you pull the trigger it's an immediate recoil so it's boom, recoil, and you're like, you're right back on it again. I don't know if that hit or not. I'm going to have to check on the video. Hmm. All right, let's try that with buckshot.
that hit. <laughs> that hit. Anybody that tells you that a short barrel shotgun can't get it done, that's about 80 yards with buckshot. You heard an impact. That's a 12 inch barrel. And of course, loading is just throwing one in, pushing it forward back on the gun, or loading this way, which, by the way, is why I had this made up. The guys at Bravo Concealment did a beautiful job making a double row belt holder for me. And uh, it'd really be cool if they could get this in the production. Wink, wink. Um, but it allows me to do buck and um, slug, or slug and buck, whatever I want to do, and then I have also have a flashlight. I'm big on light, guys. I've done a lot of night training, a lot of low light training, and when you need light, you need it now, and you need a lot of it. So I've, you guys know I've always got light everywhere on my body. The mount that I'm using for the optic is the LT837 from LaRue, and it is the absolute lowest mount that they make, and I believe they actually made it specifically for the 12 gauge uh, for the competition, uh, 12 gauge competition world. For those who wanted to have their optic as low as you could possibly get it on the pick rail, because unlike an AR-15, your face is much lower on a 12 gauge than it is on a rifle. So you actually can very comfortably get right up behind that sight and see it perfectly. And, um, but when you need to, but the problem is you can't co-witness your sights through it. So if something were to happen to the optic, it's a matter of grabbing this right here pulling back, rotating out, so it's back, out rotation, and the optic is immediately dumped, and now you have access to your ghost ring and fiber optic front. And the sight picture on this thing, um, I went to a class, honestly I forget when, I'll put it up on the screen, I went to, went to a class with this gun, specifically said, this is a class I'm going to go to because TDI is really comprehensive in how they teach. And I was told by, uh, by one of the instructors, Wyatt Roush, and anyone who knows Wyatt Roush is laughing right now because, and I mean that in a good way, because Wyatt is very straightforward with you. If, if he thinks you're, you're going to screw the pooch, he'll flat out tell you, literally. Man, when that gun comes out of the bag, I mean, that's, that's the way Wyatt talks. He's a great guy. And he said to me, when that gun came out of the bag um, on the first day of this class, I started laughing. He says, but all weekend long, everything you have shot at, you hit. And coming from Wyatt, this guy has confirmed deer kills with handguns at like three or four hundred yards. I mean, the guy is is a serious shooter, a serious hunter. So he knows he knows handguns, he knows shotguns, he knows rifles. So for him to pay me that compliment was really great. And this gun, guys, it delivered. And the cool thing about nickel boron is, as it ages, it becomes more and more slick. So every time that this gun is cycled, guys, there's not a drop of oil in or on the internals of this gun. And it is absolute butter. And um, not only is nickel boron very, um, very hard, it's also a self-lubricating surface, so you actually have the best of both worlds. Corrosion can't get into it, and it self-lubricates, and it's pretty much an internal thing. And of course, with 12 gauge, unless you just flat out are an idiot and you beat this gun to pieces and run it over, 12 gauges are pretty much eternal. And um, people have asked, well, why don't you put all the spacers on? Because I actually want a very short gun. I understand that this is, this goes contrary to what everyone thinks the length of pull should be on this gun. I'm 6'4", which is why this tripod is uh, eight something feet over my head. I want the length of pull on this shotgun to be very, very short so that when I come up on a doorway, I can, I can open the door, that should be this way, I can open the door, I can bring the gun to the ready position, I can visualize everything in the room, and at a moment's notice I can shoot, and if I've got to move around a door fast, a door frame, I don't have to lower the gun or raise the gun to get it around a corner. Not to mention, when it's on its sling, when I've got it slung up, and as you guys have seen in the other video, this is a length of paracord. What I did was I took the cosmetic piece that the, that the Magpul SGA furniture comes with and I cut this down with a Dremel on both sides and I stitched up a piece of military grade true 550 paracord and stitched it up 
really, really tight with polyester thread. And then what it creates is 180 rotation on the sling. And what that allows me to do is the shotgun can be here. For breaching purposes, if you've got your long gun on, if you were to come up on a door and say you're the breacher, you would release the long gun to the front. The 12 gauge comes right up, and you notice the two slings are sliding past one another. You breach, boom, boom, boom. The shotgun goes back, and the long gun comes up. And the two stay away from one another because the slings that I make are true mil spec. Here, um, mil spec webbing, 4,000 pound rated mil spec webbing. The weave is really, really tight and it's really slick fabric. So the two slings work around one another without any problems. And uh, so, anyways, yeah, this this is a really cool combination. Um, there are multiple reasons for this design. I wanted really, really small. I wanted a gun that stayed out of my way as much as I could get it to, and this gun fills the bill. So yeah, um, I hope this answers the questions that you guys have. If you have any more questions, by all means, hit me up. Oh, I, I guess just, I should answer this. I keep forgetting to explain to you why it's called the pig. Ignore this right here. If you look at the front profile, it looks like a pig's snout. That's why I refer to this as the pig. And now that you know, a lot of you are going, oh, I was wondering why I called it the pig. That's why. But yeah, great shotgun. Um, my only eh on it is... 12 gauges are, it's hard to mount lights to 12 gauges. You can mount it on the side. Um, in fact, in this photograph here, you can see how I used to run it years ago. I mounted it on the side and it worked. But um, what I found was that whenever I had to get through narrow openings where the gun had to go sideways and get pushed through, because I was going to training where, I mean, you were having to take weird shots. So you try to shove it through an opening, and if your light is on the side, it goes <clears throat> and hits. You have, you have no ability to get your gun through. So you end up having to do the handheld technique where you pull your, pull your handheld and you kind of put it over the barrier, and then you shove your 12-gauge through, and it's just, it's crazy. And remember, guys, when a 12-gauge bucks and clips you in the face, you're going to ruin your glasses, and you're going to have an imprint of your safety glasses on your face because these things kick. So that didn't work. Um, I ultimately mount it to the bottom, but you have to be careful with this because if you miscalculate, you will split your thumb open and recoil. Um, as it recoils, sometimes it'll kick up and your thumb will go forward and catch this area right here. And I ended up splitting my thumb, thumb open one time and blood started squirting out. So, you know, it's, it's the nature of firearms training. It is what it is. It is, it's hard work. You're going to get bruised, you're going to get bludgeoned, but it is what it is. So I chose the best combination of everything that I could in the shotgun, and I tried to keep things as simple as I could. And I know that someone's going to say, well, because I know some of you are going to be like studying this gun as carefully as possible, and someone's going to say, oh, you know, you need to get a whiz-bang, blah, 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 safety. Well, guess what? I do have a whiz-bang, blah, 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 safety. In fact, it's right here. That little doodad right there, and I frankly forget who makes it. Great, uh, I want to say it's GG and G, but I'm not really sure. It's a great safety. The problem is, when you're a lefty, your gun is against your body this way, not this way. And for those that understand 12 gauge, when you see red, you're dead. That's fire, and that's safe. Well, the problem is, when this gun is against my body, this is the part that's against my body because I'm a lefty, because this side of the gun rests against my body so what was I doing constantly I was always pushing the safety over every time that this gun was on sling I was bumping into that safety and I was bumping the shotgun off safety and uh, it actually happened at the class with TDI let me tell you what they were multiple times in that class where I glanced down or really felt down I reached down and went and realize that when I'd done a transition, because remember it's shoot, shoot, and you might have a partial mag. I forget what the drills were, but there were some drills where you would be doing something with the shotgun. And you would either shoot it, or you would rack it, or you would begin to load it. I forget what the thing was, but on multiple occasions I found that I had bumped my safety. Because it was always resting against my body this way. 
So I said, well, as much as I like that safety, it's going to have to go because it's a safety issue, no pun intended. It's a safety issue for me as a lefty. Well, someone's going to say, but as a lefty, how do, you, how do you flip the safety off your shotgun? And you're right. I mean, it's, kudos to you because you're actually thinking about it. Because remember, for a righty, for you guys, gun's on safe. The gun's at the low ready. As soon as you need it, it's safety off and you're on the gun, right? And then as you come down, it's safety on with your middle finger. Well, for me, as a, whoops, for me as a, this is why I like the sling. I mean, you can literally flip the gun in every direction and it still works. For me as a lefty, I would simply begin by having my middle finger resting on the safety and I'd be in this position here. And as soon as they'd say fire, I would bring the gun up and safety's off already and I'm ready to work. Um, and of course, the last thing is the weight. As you see it right here, light, optic, everything minus sling is seven pounds, seven ounces. Um, that's really darn good for a 12 gauge that's fully dressed for battle because that really honestly puts it in the weight of a, of a decently appointed AR-15. So and I, guess, I guess at a certain level that takes the complaint of weight out of it. It just feels heavy because it's concentrated weight. It's a very short package and it's very concentrated weight. But bro, 12 gauge, especially pump action 12 gauges, will handle everything. I mean, everything you can shoot, uh, everything in the 12 gauge world will shoot out of this gun because this is a 3 inch magnum, it'll take everything. So don't discount the 12 gauge and of course based on the comments that I've gotten from you guys, it tells me you guys get it. Alright guys, that's what I got for you. This is the Tier 1 Citizen short barrel shotgun known as the pig. As always, I thank you guys for watching and also I thank you guys for your sling purchases. You have no idea how grateful I am for your business. It keeps, literally keeps the lights on and it keeps food on our table. If you guys have any questions, concerns, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer. As always, God bless you all. Thank you for watching. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one. Come on! That did it. Killjoy. Killjoy. <laughs> ah, there you go. Wee! I love 12 gauge. Come on. <laughs> that did it. <laughs>